Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Today I am sharing a twist on die cut inlay and I'm going to show you how to get some gorgeous two for one cards. Let's get started. I'm starting out here with a piece of Lux white watercolor paper. I'm going to spritz it a few times with water and then I'm going to bring in the blue and shimmer metallic spray, making sure to shake it up really well. And then I'll spray this right along the bottom of my piece about four times. Next, I'll bring in the green and shimmer metallic spray and I'm going to spray this along the middle. I'll do this about four or five times, making sure it's next to the blue. And then lastly, I'm going to bring in the ocean and blue gold spray. Make sure you get these really nice and shaken up before you use them. And I'll spray this right along the top of our piece until it is covered up at the top. Next, I'll come in with my heat tool and I will start drying everything. And to help these colors run as I'm drying, I'm gonna lift my piece here so that the colors drip down along the cardstock. Once it's dry, I'm gonna come back in with my water sprayer. I'm going to very gently squeeze on the trigger just to add some drops that are a bigger style, some flecks of water on here. Then I'll let this dry again, and it's going to give me some really nice droplet looking type formations on the card panel. It'll break it up and add some variation. Next, I'll bring back in that blue shimmer. I'm gonna add a couple more sprays here along the bottom, and then I'll also add a few more sprays of the ocean blue and gold metallic spray towards the top, because I want there to be less green in the center, and I want these to blend more seamlessly. Once that's done, I can come in again with the water sprayer and spritz it a little bit to help move those colors around more. And then once again with my heat tool. So it's all about layers here. You can spray with water, with your colors, dry as many times as you want. The goal here is to create a multi-layered piece and it'll look really nice. When it dries, I definitely recommend lifting it up here and there because that is going to help the colors run. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and tap some of the color directly from that bottle top onto the paper. That's gonna give me some really nice bright pops of color and just help to make the piece look a little bit more visually appealing. So once that is completely dry, here is our pretty finished piece. You can see all those different layers with the dots and the texture and the shimmer. It all looks really, really nice. Once my panel is completely dry, I'm going to die cut the floral wreath fancy die out from the center of the panel. I'll run it through here on my die cutting machine. And now I can go ahead and pop out all of the pieces with a pokey tool. I am going to hang on to all of those pieces because we're going to get a two for one card here. Since I don't want to lose any of those tiny pieces, I'm going to go ahead and start with this second card first. I'll start by adding glue all the way around the edges, and then I'm going to adhere this to an A2 sized piece of white cardstock, so that way the white is going to be showing through. When you're adding your glue, you do want to make sure and get glue along the little inset pieces, so that way this whole piece sticks down to your card front really well. Now I can add in the little bits that were cut out and glue those right in the parts where they should go and it'll help it look more like the original floral wreath. Then I'll take that same die and I'm gonna cut this from white cardstock to layer on top. Now that I have my piece here, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So normally with die cut inlay, you glue everything down and in so it's inlaid but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna glue along the stem portion of the wreath. I'm doing that because I want to have the leaves and the flowers pop up and it's gonna give this a 3D look. So I'm adding that glue, you can see all the way along that center portion where kind of the center vine would go. And now I'm going to pop my die cut in along that center portion. 
and I'll just slowly work my way around here. This helps to have some type of pokey tool. So I'll poke those center pieces in and now I can come along the other side. I did this half and half just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Again, I want to come along and glue all the way along that main center line that we have for the wreath. Now I can come along with the pokey side and just pop all of those leaves and little floral bits up here and there. And I'll do this all the way around the wreath, just how I like it. <laughs> and once I'm done, I can come along and add a little bit of glue underneath those pieces but I'm not going to press down on them. I'm going to leave that glue where it is and let it dry. And what that's gonna do is it's going to keep it so that those pieces cannot lay flat into the spots. So just don't press down. You want the spots to stay raised where you've added that glue. And now I'll set it aside to dry. While that's dry, let's move on to our other card. I'm starting by die cutting another one of the floral wreaths, this one from Vellum. For my sentiment, I'll bring in one of the stamps from the Breath of Spring Heroescape. And I have my piece here just so I can make sure I get my sentiment where it's gonna look nice on the card once the wreath is glued down. I have my Hero Hues Core Ink in Nautical. This is a nice deep blue, and it's gonna look really good with all of the blue details that we have in our die cut wreath. So I'm gonna stamp this twice just so I can get some really good coverage. I'm not gonna push down too hard so that I can make sure the line work stays nice and crisp. Then I can adhere my vellum layer around my sentiment. I'll do that by adding glue all the way along the back and I'm mainly gonna focus again on those areas where the stems are. I will bring it here and there on a few flowers and a few of the leaves just so I can make sure it stays secure on the front of the card, but I don't want to do them all because I do want some of them to have movement and pop up a little bit. Now I can lay this down on the top. I'm gonna to grab it from the two sides. That tends to help when you have a big kind of fluffy die cut like this. So I'll hold it on both sides to make sure I get it where I want it on the card. And then I can lightly go around and tap everything down with my fingers. So I'll repeat that same process with our blue piece here that we created earlier. I'll add the glue on the back and once I've added all the glue, I'll do the same exact thing. I'll take it from both sides and line it up so that it matches with the vellum. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. You can do this slightly offset because then you're gonna get the benefit of seeing more of the pretty vellum peeking out. And once I get it where I like it, I just go along again and lightly press. I did add a few sequins to the front of this card, and now I'm gonna glue the whole thing down to an A2 sized card base. I'll just line this up at the corners, flip it together, and use my fingers to press around the edges. And that's gonna finish off our first card. Ooh, look at all of that pretty shimmer, as well as how delicate all of those flowers are. Very, very pretty. For our second card, I'm going to start by stamping another one of the sentiments from the Breath of Spring Heroescape. And this time I'm gonna do it in intensified black ink. Again, being very careful here, just so I don't lose any of the line work, uh, especially on the smaller words. So I just lightly press down and double stamp this and that'll ensure that those look really nice. Cut it with a coordinating die and now I can add glue. I went ahead and cut two extra of the sentiment and I'm gonna layer those back behind the stamped sentiment so it'll have some lift on the front of the card. Once I was done, I actually decided to add two more on the back to make it even thicker because I really wanted this to pop off the back of the card almost higher than the wreath. So I'm gonna glue this right in here. I'll nestle it right in so that the G goes in between that leaf and flower and kind of sneaks in that little indent right there. And now I can come in and add some iridescent sequins. On the other card, I did iridescent and white. On this one, I'm just gonna use some iridescent sequins. 
and I'll put some along the die cut and I'll also put some onto the card panel. All that's left to do is add this to its card base and that is gonna finish off our second card. Look at the pretty shimmer and shine. I love how both of these cards turned out and I love that you get this nice two for one with these cards. I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so I can continue to bring you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>